Hello and welcome to today's English lesson. My name is Stuart. In today's lesson, we're looking at frequently or commonly confused words in English. Let's go to the intro. Now, as I said, today's lesson is looking at frequently or commonly confused words in English. And we have one, two, three, four, five examples of words that can be confused or are easily confused by learners of English and also by uh, native English speakers. And when I say native English speakers, I mean people that have spoken English all their lives or have been educated in that language. Now, the first one is sensible and sensitive. And this is particularly difficult for certain language backgrounds. For example, Spanish, I know, confuse these two words because they are a false friend in Spanish. And But to clarify uh, the difference between the two, sensible means good judgment. So Jane made a sensible decision not to quit her job. So good judgment, she made a practical decision or, or she decided well uh, not to quit her job. And uh, sensitive, in the example, uh, immigration is a sensitive topic at the moment. Now, sensitive means easily upset. And if we put it in the context of a topic, immigration is a sensitive topic, meaning that immigration is a topic that needs to be uh, treated carefully in order not to upset uh, people because a lot of people have uh, uh, mixed emotions or they react quite strongly when it comes to the topic of immigration, especially in some countries in Europe at the moment. Immigration is a, it's a sensitive topic, let's say. So be careful with the two, sensible, good judgment and sensitive, easily upset or if you talk about it in the context of a topic or a subject, meaning that it can uh, upset people's um, feelings. Now, the second one is lie and lay. Now, this is uh, a problem for a lot of people. In fact, I get uh, two or three uh, messages every month asking me to please, please a video on lie and lay. And this is also a problem, a problem for native speakers as well. We, we confuse this all the time. If you go to Australia, you hear people confuse these two all the time because they are uh, similar in uh, physical appearance. They look similar, but there is a difference in meaning, of course. Now, lie has the structure of lie, lay, lane. So lie, lay is the past tense and lane is the participle. And lay is lay, laid, laid. Okay, lay, laid, laid. The confusion comes here, where we have the past tense of the verb to lie, the past tense uh, is lay. So this is where people make the mistake all the time. But in context, it can be quite clear. So my dog loves to lie in the sun. Now to lie means that you put yourself in a horizontal position, or my dog puts itself in a horizontal position. It lies, okay? You lie in bed, you lie in the sun, you go to the beach, you put down your towel, and you lie on the beach. Now the confusion comes when we use it in the past tense. My dog loves to lie in the sun, and yesterday my dog lay in the sun, okay? Or my dog has lain in the sun all day. So this is where the confusion comes. Now remember that the verb to lie also means to not tell the truth. But here we're using it, we're using it in the context of to, uh, to put yourself down horizontally, to lie on the ground. Because if you use it meaning to not tell the truth, these change, okay? In that sense, it would be lie, lied, okay? He lied about the problem. So it's different. And 
the verb to lay, the verb to lay means to put something down. It means to place something down. Okay? So please lay the glass, put the glass down, please lay the glass on the bench before you break it. Please lay the glass on the bench before you break it. So your child has a glass in his or her hand. You ask them to put the glass down or to lay the glass on the table, to place the glass down on the table. So that is how we can distinguish between the two. Okay, so my dog loves to lie in the sun, to lie in the sun, to be in the sun lying, okay, and please lay the glass on the bench before you break it, to put it down. So my son laid the glass on the table and it didn't break. So that is the difference between the two, okay. We could also say that, for example, lay can have an object after it as well. You lay the glass on the table. You can't lie anything, okay? You can't lie. You lie down, but you can't lie an object, okay? So that is the difference there between the two as well. One can take an object, lay, and the other one cannot. Now the next one is loose and lose. Now uh, this is a problem that uh, non-native speakers have with English more than native speakers. Loose and lose. Loose means uh, that something is uh, too big, it's, uh, it, it doesn't fit you properly, or for example, something is not fixed uh, tightly uh, in an area, for example. Something can be too loose, okay. The example, I need to buy new pants, these are too loose, they're too loose, okay. They're not tight, they don't feel comfortable, they're too loose, there's too much room, okay. We could also say that if this, if this, if this whiteboard is not uh, tight on the wall, it's loose, it moves, it's, a, it's loose, okay, it's not tight. And lose means that you uh, misplace something or you, or you uh, have something and it disappears. That is what lose means, okay. So, here are my keys, try not to lose them. Now the difference, the problem for many speakers is with the pronunciation. So loose and lose. There's like a z sound, a z sound here. This is a s sound, this is a z. Loose, lose. That's where the confusion comes in for people, but the meaning is quite different. Now this can also be a verb, but it's not commonly used as a verb. As a verb, it means to set free, okay? But here, we're using it as an adjective, meaning not tight, or that there's uh, something is not fixed properly, okay? Uh, meaning that it is loose. Now, the next one is past and past. The confusion here comes from the pronunciation, past and past. But remember that to pass, this is a verb, and this can be an adjective, a noun, a preposition, or an adverb, but it can never be a verb. So if you need to use this as a verb, the past tense is past, and past is an adjective, noun, preposition, or an adverb. Look at the examples. I passed the pub on my way home, meaning that I went by the pub. I passed the pub on my way home and I drove past the pub on my way home. So here it's an adverb. Now it's very confusing. This is confusing for native speakers as well. But remember, if you use this as a verb, or if you use it in any way except as a verb, okay, that's how we distinguish between the two. And the last one is there, there, there. Confusion again from the pronunciation. There, there, there. Examples. Put your shoes with their shoes. Possessive, their shoes. My shoes, your shoes, his shoes, her shoes, their shoes. Second example. Their shoes are over there. Their, meaning in that particular place. So, their shoes. Their shoes are over 
there, okay? So the shoes that belong to them are over there. They're in that position. They're located there. And the last one is here, there, meaning they are. So they're my shoes, not yours. So they are my shoes, not yours. So these are some of the frequently confused words in English. Now, thank you very much for watching the lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below, in the comments section. Remember to share the video on social media, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest. Share it up on social media. I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good day.